Hello, today we shall learn about the linear transformations of the independent variable. Consider this signal x of t. Now, we wish to find the linear transformation of the uh, time variable to get x of a t plus b. Let's say this could be 3t plus 4 for example. So these kind of transformations are called linear transformations and here a is called the scaling factor. And B is called the translation factor. Now we shall see how do these A and B factors affect the transformation independently. Now consider the signal X of T as shown below. Consider this signal. Now we wish to find x of t plus 2 for example. Now what we mean to say is that when t is equal to the value at t equal to 0 is now shifted to t plus 2 equal to 0 which means t is equal to minus 2. So now if we want to plot this signal we will see that the value x equal to 0 has shifted to t equal to minus 2. So we get the plot like this with this being minus 4 minus 2 and 0 so these uh, in this transformation we see that if the b value the translation factor is positive the graph tends to move towards the negative side of the t axis and vice versa we can say that if the b factor is negative the graph will tend to move towards the positive side of the t axis let us see another example in which we use the scaling factor. Consider the same function again. Now this time, instead of x equal to t minus 2, we wish to find x equal to x of 2t. So here what happens, the value of x at t equal to 2 is now shifted to t equal to 1. as we can see here. So now this plot will be looking something like this. Uh, consider this fact that the value of x at the peak values won't change. So here we see that if we try to plot the same uh, transformed graph over the same axes, we see that the graph has actually shrunk in the uh, t axis the original plot was was this way in which uh, with, with ends at 2 but now the plot is of this sort the shaded plot is the new transformed plot that we have plotted now so as we can see the plot has shrunk over the t axis now we shall take an example to see how both of the transformations, the scaling and translation operate simultaneously. Consider this example. Uh, we have the same signal again. This is x of t and we wish to find x of 3t plus 2. Now what we, what we do first is first we apply the translation factor which is equal to plus 2. So as we have seen before when the translation factor is positive the plot tends to move towards the negative side of the x axis. So now we will see that this plot will move towards uh, two units towards the left so we say that the plot has moved this way and this point being minus 4 now next step we try to apply the scaling factor which is equal to plus 3 so now as we know that this if the scaling factor is positive the uh, graph shrinks uh, about the origin on the time axis so the point that was initially at minus 2 will now become minus 2 by 3 
and the point that was at minus 4 will come will become minus 4 by 3 and similarly for 0 but the value won't change and the, if there was a point here at t equal to plus 2 it would have shifted to t equal to 2 by 3 so this this plot is now the uh, fully transformed plot of uh, of x of t at x equal x of 3t plus 2 now let us try to solve the question that is displayed on the screen right now So as we see, the plot given here is a digital sig discrete time signal in which the time is discretized to n and we are told to find the following functions given x of n. So here we apply the same principle of scaling factor and the translation factor. So we try to find the value of a and b for uh, x of a n plus b. So in the first case we say that a is equal to 1 while b is equal to minus 2. So as we have seen before we do the translation part first. So what we get if b is equal to minus 2 is that the plot will move towards the positive side of the time axis by 2 units. So this plot will move towards the right towards the right by 2 units. And uh, again we see that the, the scaling factor is 1 here. So the plot won't the time axis won't be scaled by any any factor so the final plot will look like this the point that was initially at minus 1 will now move to n equal to 1 so we get this way so the point at 0 now moves to 2 and similarly for 1 2 and 3 so the numbering here will be like this and we see the point at 4 now moves to 6 and the other points are actually 0. So this is the translated version that is x of n minus 2 given the x of n as this function. We move on to the second question in which the scaling factor is actually negative. Here we see that in x of 4 minus n, we can write this as x of minus 1 times n plus 4. So we get that a is equal to minus 1 and b is equal to plus 4. So we go move on to the first step that is the translation by 4 units. As b is positive, we move towards the left side of the time axis. So we get it like this. So if we move 4 units, the point that was initially at 4 will now come to the origin. So here we get 1 by 2 and similarly uh, at the point that was initially at 3 will now come to minus 1 and similarly till minus 1. Yeah, so this is what we get. So this is the uh, plot of the function after performing the first step of translation. Now we move on to the second step that, that is the scaling factor. So the scaling factor here is 1 but it is negative. So what a negative scaling factor means is that we perform a reflection about the origin. So the point that was initially at minus 1 will now come to plus 1. And minus 2 move to, moves to plus 2 and so on. So if we try to uh, plot the final function, we'll get something like this. As the point 1 by 2 was at origin, it will remain at the same place. But the rest of the points will be reflected about the origin. So this is the plot of the function we get if we try to plot x of 4 minus n. Now we move on to the third part. Now we are asked to find x of 2n. So here we see that the scaling factor is equal to 2 whereas the translation factor is equal to 0. So we don't need to perform any translation step here. 
so we directly move to the scaling step here we see here uh, let us do as we had discussed before and uh, divide each of these with the scaling factor so we'll get something like this something like this so here we see the plot will be of this sort so if this was a continuous time signal the answer would be correct but here we see at the as this is a discrete time signal n can only take integer values so but in this case we are seeing that n is taking fractional values which are not allowed in this domain so in this case we say that this this signal is not valid and cannot exist in the discrete domain 